Yeah, well, let me just finish up this discussion. That's, I mean, that's what that's about what global warming theory does. You see, it's just Marxist theory, and it's very simple. You've got good guys, and you've got the bad guys. You've got the, you've got the, the virtuous good guys, and the mean baddies. And the mean baddies, are, you've got the conspiracy theory, They're, they control the world. And they've got this intermeshing network of relationships where big oil runs the world, big oil runs America, big oil starts the wars to its, its, um, for its own purposes, um, and that sort of thing. Uh, and big oil is polluting the world, the atmosphere with evil carbon dioxide, which is going to burn us all up in a fire conflagration, and the seas are going to rise, and the sky will fall, and um, yeah, uh, polar bears will die, uh, snows of Kilimanjaro will go away. Um, now this, this is, that's and that's conspiracy theory that basically Al Gore talked about in his um in his movie An Inconvenient Truth is he, he says well we've got these guys we've got their emails and we've got them talking to each other and we know that they know that what they're doing is bad da -da -da. but this they're sort of imputing this. It's, it, this is part of the Marxist conspiracy theory, is they impute this um, omniscience. Because the, the, the capitalist hegemony is so powerful and so omnipresent, it's, and, and it's omniscient. Like, they know that carbon dioxide causes the war. Do they? I don't know. That. I mean, I'm a scientist. <laughs> I don't know. That. I don't know how it does that. Um, uh, and they don't even tell you why that is. No, no, can, no global warming scientist will ever concoct a theory. They will just say, "Oh, we have a correlation between something and something else. A rough correlation. Um, the world's getting warmer. It must be because of human activity." Must it? Okay. Um, uh, the world's getting warmer. We have a correlation. Proof of the something that anthropogenic global warming. Now, anthropogenic global warming um, is just a hypothesis that I mean, it's got nothing to do with carbon dioxide. I mean, I mean that's the. Um, I mean that's this that's the how these um well these sophistries are constructed is um I mean back in the eighties and nineties they were talking about methane from cows belching and farting causing global warming. Um and uh and so there was this anthropogenic idea never really fastened upon any particular molecule to identify as a bad guy and they've only fastened upon carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide you can impute this uh, evil to the oil I mean, who are undoubtedly powerful omnipresent omnipotent corporations that that run the world um uh, now, and that's part of the cons that's part of the conspiracy theory because um, uh, as I said, carbon dioxide is a natural product uh, of um, of animal respiration, um, and it's used by plants to grow and it's an essential part of life and I don't know why it's evil 
but this is the Marxism again. It's, it's sort of a Marxist polemic against a chemical substance. No, it's no longer against a group of it's a powerful group, greedy, greedy, ruthless part of society, but it's now a chemical, which is bad. But anyway, anyway, the thing is, they've just got this Marxist polemic. You've got the good guys who are the poor people in the world, turns out, who are as dangerous of having their low-lying countries being flooded by rising sea level. You've got the, the poor guys, and you've got the rich guys. Um, the um, Who they are is indistinct, because this is typical of Marxist theory, that you know, it's the Obviously, it's the oil companies, the coal companies, the gas companies who are polluting, but then there's this layer of collusion between them and the Western governments. So somehow, somehow the, the average citizen of a Western country is the pets. That's basically. He's the guy who gets blamed for everything and gets stuck with the bill for it as usual and the big polluting corporations they get to um, they get to uh, get carbon credits because they do things that for the planet that they actually happen to be doing anyway like planting um, forests you know timber timber forestry projects which they do as a, as a matter of course anyway and they just give themselves carbon credits and they just simply they just simply just all their carbon guilt they simply cross off their side of the ledger um, because of their virtuous activities they're already doing which are already profitable and they get but you see the average taxpayer is like a stationary target and so he gets blamed for everything and stuck with the bill um, but he's the sort of, he's roped into the class of the capitalist class, guilty capitalist class. And so, yeah, all the, um, the poor monies have to be obtained from Western governments and, uh, I think, sent to the third world to help them with their poverty and the effects of the regrettable effects of global warming. Um, now, yeah, classic Marxism. There's the capitalist class, um, the baddies, and there's the goodies who are the. Um, well, and this is just, yeah. There's the basically this is just imperialism, imperialist polemics, Marxist imperialist polemics, two point. Um, yeah, Western corporations practice oil imperialism, gas imperialism, coal imperialism, and they exploit the poor um, brown people. And um, sorry, yellow. Oh, yellow. No, no offense. Um, uh, they exploit the poor natives, and these natives. Uh, get exploited and um, yeah it's bad and this is just <laughs> now again you get this anti-imperialism which was basically take Zimbabwe for example or, you know the Vietnam War or a thousand communist revolutions in the 27th, 20th century against colonial rule it was all based on this idea of the proletariat should seize the means of production. Um, like in Zimbabwe, all of Mugabe's uh, veteran cronies, whatever, getting, kicking the whites off their farms and getting control of the farms. So the, the workers seize the means of production. Um, and it, which ushers in the workers' paradise. Um, And so this has been 
I mean, this has been what's been going on in the 20th century in Marxist revolutions throughout the world is, um, but I mean, Venezuela is a good example of, of a socialist government nationalizing oil resources um, for the, the purported good of the people and all that. Um, uh, but again, I mean, Venezuela is suffering from a number of things, but so is the Soviet, uh, so is the um, so are the Gulf oil countries. They're suffering from, they were suffering from a catastrophic drop in the price of oil due to oversupply of oil, and um, and that's another fun practical problem with Marxist theory is if the proletariat are to seize the means of production, it has to be worth something. I mean, uh, like in Australia, New South Wales, you can drive around New South Wales and you see all these farms given over entirely to cotton production, which used to be sheep farms. And uh, um, and you can see thousands upon thousands of empty shearing sheds all over New South Wales and they've got all the machinery still lying idle and all the gear and all the yards and all the sheds and um, all this all the equipment lying idle uh, waiting for a day when wool will be worth something again but the price of wool the price of um, wool went down catastrophically um, and so it's, it was no longer worth it to, it was, it was worth more to grow cotton instead of sheep. Um, and so the means of production, I mean the shearing sheds, which were um, again in the 20th century a, a scene of so much sort of labour conflict in Australia. I mean the, this these means of production isn't, isn't worth anything. Um, uh, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, global warming, I mean, that is a really what it's come down to, is just Marxist politics. Um, there's, um, and you get the same thing where you, all the time, where you get up and you say, well, this, this global warming theory is dodgy. I mean, it's not science. It's um, it's a bunch of hokum. That's not how you do science. Um, and they start immediately saying, "Are you trying to say that there's no such thing as large exploiting oil company?" Um, and they try to say things like, "Are you trying to say that?" Um, coal doesn't pollute. I mean, are you trying to say that, um, yeah, that, uh, that that burning coal doesn't release radioactive heavy metals into the atmosphere? And all these things are true, to a degree. I mean, there are there are large, powerful oil companies, um, which have a lot of influence in government. True enough. Um, and burning coal does, well, in the 70s it was famous for causing acid rain, but, uh, but like in the 70s, like in Germany, the big Germany industri German industrial factories used to pump out burned coal and the smoke would blow north and fall as acid rain on the Swedes and the Swedes would get fit. Um, but so much work has been done in the past few decades on scrubbing the ash out of coal and all that, and just um, yeah, catalytic conversion, all that sort of thing of of just the exhaust products of coal-fired power station that they've they've ameliorated acid rain a lot, and there's been a lot tighter regulation since it was in the seventies, and. Um, People know a lot more, 
Um, so, you don't get the problems 